Hello, Internet. My name is Lave, and I've taken a break from going to the cinema at the London Film Festival to go to the cinema and see what many have described as the film of the year. I watched Joker. So this latest interpretation of the iconic character is set in an 80s depiction of Gotham and this time he has a name, Arthur Fleck, a 30-something nobody who lives with and cares for his elderly mother, earning money as a street clown whilst aspiring to be a stand-up comedian. But after a series of unfortunate events, Arthur and society, it seems, descend into madness. So for the record, when this was first announced, I was a bit iffy about it, even when they plastered Martin Scorsese's name all over it as a producer, and I thought, well, unless he's directing it, I'm, I'm still not sure about it. Then they announced that Todd Phillips was the director. He made Starsky and Hutch, The Hangover Movies and, and War Dogs. I was like, okay, interesting choice, but I'm still not sure. But then my interest was peaked when they announced that Joaquin Phoenix was going to play the iconic character. And I'm basing that completely off of his performance in Lynn Ramsey's film, You Were Never Really Here, which shares so much DNA with this film. And, and it was my hope that they could take his performance from that film and the tone from that film and, and make a Joker film out of it. And, and that is what they've delivered. It's another start and transformative performance from Phoenix that evolves over the course of the film. Physically, he's wiry and spindly throughout, but his mannerisms and the way he carries himself changes. And I'm not sure if this is a small detail that I imagine, but at the beginning of the film, when he's a normal clown, his his shoes are a clown size shoes, so he runs around like this. He's a bit kind of all over the place. But then as he makes his transformation into Joker, the shoes that he wears are, are normal size. It's like they're saying it's more of a better fit. And, and dare I say it, his movement becomes more graceful and majestic, almost balletic as he dances and moves like this. But the detail that I really like about his performance is his laugh, which is actually a part of the plot. He says he has this condition which makes him laugh uncontrollably in inappropriate moments. At times he's holding it in, other times you think he's forcing himself to laugh in innocuous moments. One of the defining moments or scenes in the film for me sees him go to a comedy club to, to do some research on comedy and you hear the crowd laughing at the correct time at the punchline and he laughs when everyone's gone quiet then they laugh and then he laughs which is a sign that he's he's so disconnected he's out of sync with society which is what the film is is going for with regards to the violence there wasn't as much as I thought there was going to be but when it hits it hits hard and is very realistic when someone gets taken down from a punch or from gunfire they are down and out and I think that's why this film is causing so much controversy now that it's been released to the public because of its links with mental illness and, and violence which don't go hand in hand if, you, if you're mentally ill it doesn't mean that you're extremely violent but when you consider the the cinema shootings related to the dark night I can understand why this conversation is being had but then going back to Lynn Ramsey's You Will Never Really Hear which is also another film about a man with a mental illness which is also extremely violent if we're having a conversation about the Joker then we should be having it about that film as well I just think that because this film is so high profile and because it's a comic book movie that's why people are talking about it and a comic book movie this is just a very grounded and realistic one set in the Batman universe with recognizable characters and settings like Thomas Wayne, Wayne Manor and Arkham Asylum. Speaking of which there was a moment in the film where I started to disengage with it slightly because I felt like it was trying too hard to thread it back into the the Wayne and the Batman universe and I thought no like why why are they doing that but then as we enter into the third act it was it's totally justified now to explain why I do have to venture into spoiler territory and considering I'm not going to get a chance to do a spoiler review for this I'm going to go into it so if you don't want anything spoiled then skip to this section in the video so the overall narrative and premise of the film I don't think is anything new or unique. I just think it's one that's been very well executed when we find out that the Joker is an unreliable narrator. So this is the Joker's origin from his perspective. Half of it, arguably maybe even all of it, might not have happened. It's all taken place 
in his mind, or, or that's one way that it could be interpreted. There is a moment like the, the when the penny drops is the scene when he breaks into what you think is his girlfriend's apartment, played by Sazie Beats, and she's like, "Who are you? You're you're Arthur, right?" And I was like, "Oh, that that's brilliant." I mean, even the final scene of the film could be interpreted in multiple ways because he's being interviewed by his psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum. And that could be interpreted as taking place after the events of everything that we've just seen. But earlier on in the film, it does suggest that he's already spent some time in Arkham. So you could interpret it either way. As I mentioned earlier, this film is set in an 80s depiction of Gotham, which when compared to the other Batman films, this Gotham doesn't have a, a personality or style, but it is recognizable and again very grounded and I also like the fact that it doesn't go over the top with the 80s references that so many films have done recently there are a couple of like 80s inspired songs but there's kind of remixes of them and the film does have its own score which has this orchestral like string section to it which gets more disorganized and disembodied as our character does so this film in many ways did remind me of the other Batman films as well like Bane's story in Dark Knight Rises is there with the rich going up against the poor. It also made me think of Batman 1989 at one point, but it's so unlike the other DC films like your Aquamans and your Wonder Womans. There's no like blue beams going up into the sky. And, and I can't believe that this film was pitched and, and Warner Brothers made it. Uh, I thought it was a really uncomfortable watch, but I, I still was really entertained by it, if that's the right word. So that's my thoughts on Joker and pause the video if you want to take a close look at my enjoyment tracker now. I've seen a lot of people comparing this film to Martin Scorsese's The King of Comedy, which I'm ashamed to say that's like the only Martin Scorsese film I haven't seen, but certainly I can see how it relates and it's been inspired by Mean Streets and Taxi Driver, and that's how I would describe this film to anyone who hasn't seen it. It's the taxi driver of comic book movies. Like take that as you will. But let me know what your thoughts are if you've seen it and how does it compare to the other interpretations of the Joker from Romero to Nicholson to Ledger and, and even Leto. Let me know down below. And as always, thanks very much for watching this review. If you can, give it a like and don't forget to share the lave. <laughs>